too quickly for me. Just... I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. I'm oh, no. <laughs> That's great. I can hear you. <laughs> Thank oh, you. Okay. <laughs> Keeps in the background. Hi, everyone. We'll get started really soon. Um, just give the last few folks, I think we're missing two. Uh, yeah, we're missing two. Uh, just a few more minutes and then we'll get started. And we are streaming to YouTube. And whoever has birds' noises in the background, it's really pretty. So you can stay unmuted. <laughs> Member Nathan, sorry, Member Nathanson, if you would please go ahead and check your audio visual. So. Thank you. How is everybody? Good. Well. Doing well. Great weather this weekend. Definitely. <laughs> okay, Kristen, I would say let's wait one more minute and see if Lisa is able to join. Otherwise, uh, at 3.30, uh, you can go ahead and start the meeting as long as Eileen is ready to take roll. Okay, great. Ready on the sun.
Okay, Kristen, it's 3.30. If you're ready, we can go ahead and start if you would like to call the meeting to order um, or if you'd like to wait another few minutes, it's up to you. Okay. Eileen, are you ready to take roll call or start Hi. the meeting? I am. Um, we're gonna, generally we start with you sort of read the disclosure information first. Right. Just wanted to make sure you were ready. Oh, great, thank you. Yes, I am. Great, all right. I call this meeting of the Art and Public Places for the City of Santa Rosa meeting to order. Due to the provisions of the Governor's Executive Orders N2520 and N2920, which suspends certain requirements of the Brown Act and the order of the Health Officer of the County of Sonoma to shelter in place to minimize the spread of COVID-19, the Art and Public Places Committee will be conducting today's meeting in a virtual setting using Zoom webinar. Committee members and staff are participating from remote locations and, are, and or practicing so appropriate social distancing. Members of the public may view and listen to the meeting as noted on the city's website and as noted on the agenda. Members of the public wishing to speak during item three public comment or during our public hearing items will be able to do so by utilizing the raised hand feature in Zoom or by pressing star nine on their phone. Then they will be given the ability to address the committee. The recording secretary will now take roll. Let the record reflect that all members of the Art and Public Places Committee are present. Um, Great. All right. Next up, we have next up on the agenda is number three. Public comments. If you wish to make a comment via Zoom, please select raise hand button. If you are dialing in via telephone, please press star nine to raise your hand. Each speaker has three minutes. A countdown timer will appear for the convenience of the speaker and viewers. Please make sure to unmute yourself when you are invited to do so. Your microphone will be muted and at, will be muted at the end of the countdown. Do we have any comments for the public who wish to make comments on the art and public places items that are not on the agenda. We have no raised hands at this time, nor do we have any emails or voicemails for this meeting. All right. In that case, let's move on to item number four, the approval of minutes. Copies of the March 1st meeting minutes have been distributed for your review. Are there any additions or corrections to the minutes? If not, do I have a motion to approve the minutes as written? I make a motion to approve the minutes. And I do I have that. a second? I second that motion. Great. Then moving on, if the meetings meeting minutes have been adopted, Next, moving on to, to the next item on the agenda, number five. Hi, Chair Cooper, I'm gonna interject for just a moment. If you could just take a general, just um, make sure that everyone is in agreement. Oh, sorry. That's okay. So, does everyone agree with the motion to adopt the meeting minutes from the March 1st meeting? Agreed, yes. Oh, Jeff, you are on mute. Um, I wasn't at the meeting, so I'm not going to vote, but please seem okay with me. <laughs> I will mark you as an abstention. Great. So all, I guess we just need an all in favor, all in favor vote. Um, so we got, and, and it looks like if everyone could just raise their hands if they're in favor, I think that'd be the easiest way. Great. Okay. Thank you. All, so, Kristen, if you want, you want to just recap that. All in favor with Jeff, uh, with Member Nathanson abstaining. All agreeing ex with Member Jeff Nathanson abstaining. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Great. 
Now we can move on to item number five on the agenda. APPC activation discussion. So the Art and Public Place, sorry, APPC Art and Public Places is integral to the implementation of the goals and strategies outlined in the Public Art Program Strategic Plan Fiscal Year 21 through 24. To strategically activate the APPC, the plan recommends the formation of ad hoc task force to enable an iterative process in developing and defining the roles, responsibilities, and expectations of APPC members and the committee as a whole. Staff will present an outline for discussion. Great, thank you. Um, thank you, Chair Kiefer, and might I just say congratulations on your appointment as chair. That was done just um, a few made official just a few days ago. So um, we will be working with you to continue that transition with Lisa uh, kind of handing over the reins there. So um, <clears throat> I am happy to talk to you about this uh, item today. This is a discussion item meant to kind of start a conversation about this process. Uh, and if you recall from our conversations about the strategic plan and the um, next steps for determining um, the Art and Public Places Committee members' roles in the process of the implementation of the plan. Um, this is a continuation of that conversation and a start for us to talk about various ad hoc task forces that um, may be formed to continue the work in a few key areas for a limited concentrated amount of time. Um, so I prepared this activation outline, which kind of summarizes the goals, um, how it relates back to the strategic plan and the three proposed tax ad, uh, ad hoc task forces that uh, we're looking at at this, at this time. Um, all throughout this document, you will see um, the uh, references to the strategic plan in the parentheses. So it'll be a Roman numeral, a, a capital letter, and then a number. Um, those are relating back to the goals, strategies, and tactics that are in the strategic plan. So if you are looking at them kind of side by side, you can kind of dig a little bit deeper into each one. Um, but generally, as you'll see in this document, um, Eileen or uh, Kimberly, do you mind making that just a tiny bit smaller so maybe we can see a little bit more of it on one page? I think that might be helpful. That, that, oh, maybe that, that's a little too small. Go back, back up a little bit. Um, maybe, maybe, maybe just 100% and then scroll down at when we're ready. Um, so you'll see that they, they, the items um, that are called out in the strategic plan uh, that are, that are referenced here kind of fall into these three categories, diversity, equity, inclusion, and access, engagement, and then project development. And so um, those, those, all those references relate back to specific um, tactics in the, in the strategy, in our strategic plan. So, uh, and as it's described here, the function of an ad hoc task force is to accomplish specific tasks on a short-term basis that are not easily provided for elsewhere with the whole committee um, structure. And each ad hoc has a particular goal to achieve on behalf of the Art Public Places Committee. And when that task is completed, then the task force is dissolved. Um, the Brown Act does not apply to ad hoc committees consisting of less, an a quorum, less, a, less of a quorum of the initiating body. So um, the task forces are made up um, in our case of one uh, are of two or three um, art and public places committee members that meet to specifically address the items um, assigned to the task force. And then when those items are completed, the task force is dissolved. So uh, that's kind of like the structure, um, the formality of how this works. And then really these categories are meant to start that conversation about the work that could be done within that structure um, and I'm happy to answer questions to kick off a discussion. I, I'd love to hear your feedback and figure out if there are addition, additions or 
suggestions for each of these um, three proposed task forces. Great, thank you, Tara. At this time, do any committee members have questions for Tara regarding this item? If so, please physically raise your hand. And just as a reminder, we're doing questions only at this time, uh, no discussion. So, well, this is a discussion item. This is a, yeah, this is a discussion item. So we're, it, we're open to discussion. I think the best uh, format would be to have public comments um, at some point within, um, within the uh, within the item itself, and then there can be additional discussion after that if needed. Okay, I will initially take Ann Baumgartner's uh, question. Um, I was curious about, um, do you see kind of divide, like how many people would be on these from our committee? Like would everyone take one or would we be working together with another person? Or how do you see the structure kind of starting out? Yeah, in order to avoid Brown Act kind of violations in terms of having too many committee members serve um, on on them kind of co conjointly or um, over overlapping um, the we, we would recommend that um, each task force has two committee members except one would have three because that would be the seven. Well, and we only have six members right now so two. Two for each, and you know there there's a um, it's up for discussion in terms of how best to sign up for that. If it na if, if naturally there's just an inclination to have um, you know have it just come out in our conversation today, that's great. Um, or we can have like a sign up. I can send a sign up thing that it, you can express your interest, and then I can put, start putting names on on the list, and then we can review it. So there's a couple ways we could go with that. Great, thanks. Uh, I'm going to take any initial questions first, then we're going to pop over to public comment really quickly and then continue our discussion. So questions first. Thank you. Um, Member Nathan. Um, yeah, will there be a kind of formal avenue for uh, interfacing with city departments for these ad hoc committees? Or, or, or will that be facilitated in some way? Sorry, say, say, what, say your question again. Um, will there be any kind of like formal facilitation of, 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 of interacting with other city departments for these, for these ad hoc um, committees? Or are they kind of contained, discrete, separate, you know, groups that just sort of happen among ourselves? Yes, I see. So I think it's kind of both. I, I don't think there would be a formal um, a formal relationship with other necessarily other other city departments or boards and committees. But I feel like there is work that that is being done through various city departments and on other various city committees that um, could inform our the, the this committees and these ad hoc committee discussions about it. So I feel like bringing in. Um, bringing in folks to um, to present information about what they're working on, things like that, I, I can help facilitate that, and I would be a part of facilitating the ad hoc meetings as well. So there, there is there's some support there. There's resources that could be brought to it so that there's an understanding of maybe citywide what what is being done on those issues, if that would be helpful. I think the there's some explicit tasks stated within each um, task force group that I feel like can be accomplished through the work of the two committee members, um, but being informed by maybe other resources as we can provide that. Thanks. And I, I, Rice is on this meeting too. Please chime in if you would like to share any additional information since you have more experience working with task forces than I do. <laughs> sure, yeah. And I actually appreciate that, um, that question uh, because I think the, one of the things that we really want to do is streamline operations within the city um, and definitely not have, um, you know, uh, Tara being the, the sole person um, you know, running uh, information through other things. So um, where we could, what we could do is, um, depending on what the needs of the committee is or the task force is, is make introductions so that you can have um, 
direct contact uh, so that you can sort of get the, the resources that you need um, in addition to what, uh, what Tara said. Thanks. All right, Jeff, thank you. Yeah, thanks. Um, actually following up, uh, hi Raisa, nice to see you. <laughs> um, following up on Nathan's question, um, will there be other uh, members or people um, working with the uh, task force uh, members from our committee, um, you know, from the public or other organizations? Um, just trying to get a sense of, you know, what these meetings are gonna be like. Yeah, so so in traditionally for city ad hoc task forces, the um, the body itself is made up of just the members of the committee or council or whatever initiating body it is. So uh, in this case, that would be just APPC members. But like I said, I think there are other resources that can be brought to that discussion of, of the type of work that's going on um, throughout the city. Um, there will be other opportunities for the members of the public to start participating more. We, you know, as, as you know, in our strategic plan, it calls for a lot of different engagement opportunities um, from, you know, just more rig rigorous outreach, but also through the formation of an advisory council at some point. I think that's called for um, next year in, in the implementation plan. And so uh, that engagement task force will be talking about some of those uh, opportunities. Um, and providing some guidance there. So there's, you know, th these task forces are meant to be um, committee member only, and then there's other opportunities for members of the public and others. Yeah, and it's um, it just to um, add to that, it's um, it's committee members and staff as you need. So there, it's an opportunity for you to talk frankly and sort of figure out, um, you know, the the next steps, but. Um, it doesn't mean that committee members can't be talking and be active in the community to seek information. Um, so that's how we've done it uh, most typically. So for example, um, if uh, not related to this, but say we wanted to do a policy, we're, uh, the committee members are actively uh, discussing issues or policy um, issues with uh, community members and they can bring that back and have a, a, a broader discussion within the group. But generally, the purpose of an ad hoc versus uh, ad hoc task force versus a subcommittee of this committee is to have those um, limited term discussions. Oh, that's great. That's really helpful. And um, Tara and Bryce, as you're well aware, uh, the, uh, our museum has a, a sort of a parallel task force uh, based process going on. So, um, Tara, I, I hope we can talk about where there's maybe, you know, some interface, you know, because I'll be on any one of these task, task courses, but um, if there is really, a, you know, some kind of inter, interconnection we can bring to the process that the museum is going through, that would really be helpful, I think, for both of us. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah, and to that point, I mean, I think that's the thing that's of value is identifying where it might be um, and then pursuing that. that it's, it, these aren't such structured things where you can't talk to people, you can talk to people. It's <laughs> to seek opportunity and to, um, and to promote it. Uh, and then this, it could in the end, to Tara's point, lead to a committee, a subcommittee of this committee. I mean, you can have, it's, it's just to get to the point where we can address the, I, the issues that she uh, laid out. Great. At this time, I'm going to take public comment for this item. Eileen, do we have any public comments regarding item 5.1? Thank you, Chair Keeper. We have no raised hands at this time. Great. Uh, let's continue our discussion. Uh, do we have any further questions or discussion topics to converse with Tara and Raisa at this time? Can I have another question? Oh, Anne, please, thanks. Uh, because I'm new, and not only new to this, but new to the city, um, is the objective of these task forces is, um, going to be compelling to outside people? Like, is there like, um, do each one of them have a, is it just fact finding or is it, is there a, 
You know what I'm saying? Like when you're recruiting people, what are you recruiting them for? Like just, I just need a little more language. Sure. So, um, so since these tax task forces will be only committee members, um, any kind of outreach you do at this point would be to gather information. It is fact finding, resource gathering. Um, the staff, myself, Rice, and others in the city can bring information and resources to the task forces to discuss and consider in, in help in, in uh, to, to forward the accomplishment of the tasks laid out for each one. Um, the the task for task forces. I don't know why that's so hard to say. But I keep stumbling <laughs> over it. The task forces um, will will ultimately be reporting back to the full APPC. E each task force can have updates on every meeting as regular as we need that to be for the length of these kind of assignments. Um, and so any kind of recommendations to adopt certain selection criteria, for instance, or um, uh, you know recommendations for the certain types of outreach we might be doing or um, formation of, of advisory groups or et cetera, et cetera. All of those recommendations would come back from each task force to the full committee for discussion, consideration, and any actions to be taken. And at that point, when those items are brought to the full committee, our, our committee member, uh, meetings are public, the members of the public who maybe you have talked to, different organizations that you have done outreach to and your kind of fact finding and information gathering could be there present to make public comments, to share their thoughts or in support or you know, offer suggestions. So um, it's, you know, th there's a certain amount of work that needs to be done on a task force. The reason I think we use this format is because it's, it's maybe more efficient. We can move faster to, to start start a conversation about a topic and then bring it back to the full committee to further that conversation and to um, have it be approved or move forward in some way. Or to make the specific recommendations like Tara said, and then to have those discussed in public once it gets back to the committee and then it, it's an iterative process, but it allows to her point to get a uh, process. So you can, you can be as um, directive as you would like to be. So you're really going out and getting information. I mean, you're, you're, it's a relationship building connective process that is going to find what it finds and then bring back and use that information to, I mean, I'm not trying to be yes. Yeah. yeah, so I mean, really specifically, yes, it's trying to find a, so if you take say diversity, equity, inclusion right. and access, and you're looking at a, a you know, create a specific um, criteria related. So you you want to get to, well, firstly, I mean, it's helpful. You're not um, limited necessarily to the things that, um, that are listed on the, um, the yeah. attachment, um, but it's it's um, it, the objective is to um, uh, complete some of the items or the um, needs within those um, those task forces um, based on the input that you're getting from other places and the discussions you're having to see how it's going to advance it. So um, where it's now just a, something on a list, we want it. We want to actualize it, um, and and. You know, because those aren't public meetings, though you're speaking with the public, you're sort of figuring it out within your ad hoc, the place where it does come back and where people, it gets tweaked or their comments start coming or it gets more broadly um, uh, sort of picked apart and then accepted, hopefully, is at the committee level once you're, uh, once you're sort of done with the ad hoc. And that's why those are very um, specific sort of time sensitive, not time sensitive, but time restricted. Um, so that, so that ongoing, you're not doing everything in private. Yeah, got it. Thank you. I had a, I had a question about just the language here. Um, as I was reading this, I kind of understood this as a starting place for where our, our task forces can go and how we um, begin making task forces and, and you know, kind of start chewing on this work. And uh, I, I think it's a great opportunity that these boards can kind of come together as needed and dissolve when it's not as relevant or necessary as, as our board focuses on different topics or projects. So I hope for an opportunity to um, kind of, as we solidify who's, who's going to be a member of these task forces that we Kind of put forward a little mission statement or, or what we hope to do and it, it be aligned with these points here so far. 
and if I may, I mean, a suggestion, it's um, the interesting opportunity here with the, um, with the uh, uh, task forces is, is to increase also the level of discussion amongst um, this group. I mean, what's interesting is uh, with committees and subcommittees, you're confined by the Brown Act, right? And then eventually the Sunshine Ordinance. But it doesn't mean that the conversations have to be so uh, rigid um, per se. Uh, and what we've found um, was helpful, uh, for example, in the Economic Development Subcommittee, it was a subcommittee uh, that's been longstanding and it felt very um, confined. But when we um, paused and uh, due to COVID had an economic recovery task force, um, it was an ad hoc group um, and we met for a finite period of time, we found that we uh, a, a better method in which to communicate sort of how to advance the projects and programs when we had to go back to a Brown Act structure um, and so as you're doing this, I would suggest that if you can find ways um, to be uh, less formal within the formal structure, this is also kind of an interesting way to start playing that out, to build the relationships and to start poking um, each other as you, as you uh, present sort of the, the, the outcomes of your task forces. So um, again, in the Economic Development Subcommittee, it's, uh, we have a different kind of conversation. It's all under the Brown Act, it's all out in the open, but the, um, the interactions are better and that includes with the um, community. And so I think that's also something that you might wanna think about as you're developing how you're uh, relating to each other on these, on these topics and, and in regards to the strategic plan. Thanks, Raisa, for a little bit of that experience with Economic Development Task Force. I think that helps paint a picture for how different boards and task forces can, you know, take those conversations and really roll with them, uh, and, and but still be mindful of our our obligations to the Brown Act and Sunshine Act. So <laughs> it's important to think about. Um, I liked the idea of Tara uh, sending out a sign up list. Um, would anyone else like to discuss any of these items on each of these task forces a little bit more? Um, or, or do they want an opportunity to sit and think about where they would um, where they would be most interested in putting energy and effort um, and signing up at a later date? Let's go ahead and um, send out the list and um, maybe uh, if individually people want to have conversations with Tara, that might be an easier way uh, to do it. And then um, at the next one, we can sort of formalize um, that uh, the process or who's on which one. Um, because also the other thing that would be interesting to have in the conversations, Tara, if I may, sorry, I'm just jumping all over you, um, is to also seek those um, uh, uh, opportunities that, that uh, member Nathanson, for example, um, brought up. And I think it'll be a little bit easier through those discussions. Uh, but did you have another? No, one? I was just going to say, please, re each of you, if you have that same kind of question, where might there be the best kind of um, synergy or um, just um, alignment? I, I mean, or just you're wondering what really each one you know means i i'm please just reach out i can chat with each of you about about those and then um but i'll go ahead and put out an email with the sign up um this week probably tomorrow just so you can take a look at that send me back your response but also reach out with any kind of questions or we can schedule a phone call whatever works great thank you guys and we're wrapping up with our discussion here. Let's move on to the next agenda item. Next up, we have item number six. And that is committee member reports. Oh, at this. Actually, we have 5.2 today. Oh, Just quick project updates, if you don't mind. Thanks for reminding me, Tara. Okay, no problem. 5.2 um, projects updates. Staff will present a brief, quick update on current projects. 
Great, thank you. Um, just a few updates uh, from the last month. Uh, the Imagine Art in Courthouse Square project, uh, we are finally moving forward uh, with the community engagement portion of that project. We are just now starting to craft how we will go about um, doing the collection of words and phrases that will be incorporated onto the surface of the artwork. So we are forming a, um, a community advisory group, which will um, help us with that process. Um, so you, I may be reaching out um, to, to some of you uh, who participated on that selection panel um, for your input as well, because you were aware of um, the kind of complexities with this issue through the selection process. Uh, but the goal is to start with a robust community outreach um, process sometime by uh, mid, mid April, mid to end of April. So we're starting to really um, move forward with the project timeline. Uh, the artists would like to have the kind of engagement portion of this wrapped up by June 1st so that um, she is able to move forward with the fabrication next step she needs to take for the piece. So she and her community engagement assistant are working on the um, proposed language that we'd be using to solicit these responses. And then we've been working on gathering the outreach um, list and some strategies on how we might be able to uh, get the word out there in a meaningful way in the community that will really get people interested in, in submitting their ideas uh, for this. So I will keep you posted about that and um, the ultimate process here, the full, full circle will be that um, the proposed words uh, and the final kind of design layout um, with the words on the piece will be brought back to the committee for your review um, before we move forward. So there will be the committee's eyes on that uh, part of the process as well. Um, for the Fifth Street parking garage, oh, sorry, did you have a question? I have a quick question about yes. that. Tara, will you be posting the opportunities for engagement for the Imagine Art in Courthouse Square? Uh, will that be on the project website under Art in Public Places? Um, yeah, so the project website is, um, it had a short URL. So the best way to get to it is srcity.org slash imagine art. No spaces, just all ima imagine art all together. Um, and so, yes, they will be posted there, but we will also be doing a lot of direct emails to people in the community, different community groups and organizations, um, as well as school schools. We're hoping to have an interface with San Jose City School District. Um, so, uh, but yes, website, social media, and then kind of those direct uh, invitations. I think we're even talking about doing some kind of um, flyer and maybe if we can have some on-site presence in Courthouse Square sometime this summer, we would like to try to catch the population of folks that, that are downtown on a regular basis. So, but yes, that's a good reminder. The website is a good place to check. So uh, potentially yeah, looking at either the July or August meeting of reviewing um, Yeah, I can't, you know, I can't, I don't have that, her project timeline right in front of me right now. It, it may be it may be July, um, but I'm not positive. Um, I can provide that information at the next meeting if you'd like. Uh, but there, the outreach will be heavy over the months of, um, well, the end of April and all throughout May. Okay. Thank you. Um, for the Fifth Street Parking Garage project, we did end up extending that call for artists um, an extra two weeks. And so it closed on March 29th. We received a total of 38 submissions. Um, the selection process is expected to be completed over this summer with the final artwork installation early next year. Uh, so I will provide a more in-depth in -depth update at the next meeting because by then um, the selection process should be started at that point. Uh, the committee will have um, representative, I think two representatives on that committee. So that's another email that I will be sending out um, to make sure we get folks signed up to be on that selection panel as well. For conservation and maintenance, um, recently, in fact, just last week, the Guardian of the Creek fish sculpture at Prince Gateway Park um, by Artstart, Mario Uribe, Diane Shapansky, and others was cleaned. 
um, by our conservators. ArtStart actually did more extensive repairs to it two years ago, but now we're in a um, hopefully more regular cycle of annual cleaning, uh, even though we skipped a year. Um, but we're hoping to do annual cleaning to pr pr preserve its life span a little bit longer. Um, it gets a lot of um, bio growth, meaning moss and weeds growing on it. And there's some moisture issues with the, with the grout and the tile. But right now it's in really good shape. It's clean and um, it had also been um, graffitied a little bit. So that's all been cleaned off. A uh, Hangover 2 by Charles Jennifer in Juilliard Park was also cleaned recently. It had also been graffitied. And then the city hall pieces in bronze and in steel were also recently cleaned. They look great. Um, the National Arts Program online, I know I mentioned this at the last meeting, it is still up that that exhibit is um, up until the end of April. So there's just um, a few more weeks left to see that online. Check out um, the winners and um, everyone who entered a piece in that show on our website, insideouttheer.com. And then um, I, I know that I've mentioned this in some capacity, but I wanted to give uh, a little bit more information about our new program, which is the Musician Relief um, Grants. We launch, launched this last month um, and the application deadline is, is next week, April 11th. The purpose of the program is to support working musicians in the Santa Rosa arts community by providing a grant that will aid the musician to continue working through this time of economic hardship. The funding is aimed towards musicians who have lost income due to the inability to perform live. And the funding for this is not from the public art fund, so it's slightly removed from the APPC's purview, but it's a part of the public art program. It comes from the Live at Juilliard concert series, which could not happen last year because of COVID. So um, those are all of my updates for today, but I'm happy to answer any questions. Jess. Yeah, um, thanks for that report, Tara. Uh, question, is um, the artist for Imagine Art in Old Courthouse Square, Blessing Hancock, um, making a, an appearance? Will she be coming to visit us? She will probably not for this initial outreach. Um, she has a couple ideas that you, you probably recall um, from the selection panel process. She had an idea about hiring local artists to do the outreach for her and kind of having them be um, mentees. Um, and so we are trying to work on identifying, David and I on identifying certain people who might be interested in that opportunity um, who want to kind of learn the process that she uses, but also be a connection to our local arts community. Um, and so if you have, if anyone um, on the committee has any suggestions for that component of the project, um, please let me know. Um, but essentially, no, she will not be making a visit out here for this initial uh, phase, but probably closer towards the end of the project. And she's willing to do, um, you know, virtual engagement type opportunities, but not here in person right now. Great, thanks. Lisa had a question. Yes, I have actually have two questions for Tara. The first one, when you're talking about the annual cleaning, um, were you, regarding the fish, were you um, mentioning annual cleaning for all of the uh, public art um, pieces or just certain pieces? That was my first, first question. And okay, okay, sure, I can answer that. Yeah, so um, each each artwork in our collection uh, has slight, a slightly different maintenance needs. So um, in general, most pieces need attention um, annually or every two years. Some, you can stretch that out a little bit longer, just in terms of cleaning, you know, not, not extensive repairs or conservation, but just cleaning. Um, if, if we keep up with that, then we are going to be in a better, in a better position to not have the expensive um, conservation repair projects as, as we did when we first um, contracted with this conservation firm. So right now we are getting into a cycle of um, doing the annual or every two year maintenance on most of the pieces in our collection. There are still some complicated um, more extensive projects that we have yet to schedule with the with our com with the uh, contractor, but we are hoping to tackle those um, starting this summer when we enter um, into our new budget season and have um, more funding available. 
Okay, thank you. And then my other question was regarding the um, the funds that are being redirected for the Juilliard Park music. And that was for 2020. Um, was there funds set aside for 2021 for the music for Juilliard? And if so, are we directing those funds elsewhere, or are we are we anticipating maybe having some kind of music venue there? more towards the end of the summer or fall or something like that? Yeah, good question. At this point, our message is that it's unlikely the 2021 uh, content series can happen as, as usual. And so our proposal through our budget process has been to go ahead and redirect those funds to a second round of musician grants so that we can extend um, that opportunity to more musicians. Um, we've, we've already gotten many, many more applications that we could fund with the funding we have. So there's uh, are a lot of need <clears throat> in the community for that. Um, there, there, we are looking at some other types of programming where we might have you know, socially distant, smaller type musical or theater or dance performances um, in the summer, the, sometime this summer. So there's other opportunities for that kind of, um, you know, uh, commission or, or I should say um, grant opportunity to actually provide a musical or performing arts experience. Um, but we are, we are looking at trying to use the actual Live at Juilliard funds for uh, a second round of grants. Wonderful, thank you, Tara. Okay, is there any other questions for Tara about our department report? Or sorry, our, our overview of project updates? Nope, at this time we can now move to item six, our committee member reports. Do any committee members wish to make a report at this time? If so, please physically raise your hand. Uh, Jeff. Hi, it's me again. <laughs> um, just want to quickly uh, let you all know if you didn't see the news, um, the Museum of Sonoma County is now open to the public as of last weekend, on the weekend, Saturday and Sunday through the month of April, and then we'll be opening uh, more extended hours starting in May. Uh, right now we have an exhibition in our contemporary galleries called um, 35, uh, 35 artists for 35 years, celebrating uh, 35 years of the museum being open to the public and 35 years of collecting. And um, included in that exhibition actually is a, a, a maquette for a sculpture by Mario Uribe, who uh, Tara mentioned in her um, uh, report. And uh, the uh, public sculpture, which was created um, through a commission um, partnership uh, with the, the city uh, and in, uh, utilizing an NEA grant um, that lives in our sculpture garden, which um, right now is not open to the public, but will be in starting in May. And then uh, in our window gallery, we're pleased to continue to partner with the city on um, installations uh, that are part of the open and out um, program. And so um, you can see that even when we're closed. Um, so we're very pleased to keep that going. And if anybody um, has any questions about uh, what the museum's up to and, and um, you know, the exhibitions, just let me know. Great, thank you. Do any other committee members wish to make a report? Seeing none, shoot it over to Tara. Do you have anything for a department report at this time? Yes, um, the agenda included one attachment under this item. This is the, fo the follow-up document to the um, annual work plan and recommended expenditure plan. Um, yep, there it is on the screen. You can probably blow that one up a little bit bigger. Eileen, thank you so much. Um, for being on top of all of that. 
So this, I, I, there's not much um, to say here. It kind of speaks for itself, but this was uh, requested at the last meeting showing the budget detail for how each line item in the annual work plan and specifically in the strategic plan implementation, <clears throat> how that lines up and adds up, <clears throat> excuse me. And it also highlights the three line items that are our annual recurring budget um, that was not in our strategic plan budget because our strategic plan only captured new costs that we had never budgeted for before. And so um, when you subtract those three line items from the total um, down at the bottom there, you will get the same number that it shows for the fiscal year 22 implementation of the strategic plan. So just wanted you to see this, you know, additional level of detail. Um, it, there's no action that's required. This a, a plan has already been approved by the committee at the last meeting, but I wanted you all to have it for your records. And if there's any questions, I can answer those. Um, I'll just, if it, I'm still happy to answer any questions, but under department reports, while I still um, have, have time for that item, um, I just want to thank Lisa for her time as committee chair. Uh, it was really a pleasure working with you. I can't even, I, I didn't even look up how long we've worked together. I think it was about a year, but I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> um, yes. COVID, COVID time does something weird <laughs> to your brain. So, um, but thank you so much. It was a pleasure working with you. Um, through you, you, you were kind of our brave guinea pig to be a chair during these <laughs> Zoom virtual meetings. So um, thank you so much. And I'm so glad you're still on the committee with us. And we look forward to continuing to work with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tara. I'm looking forward to continuing to work with everyone too. Thank you, Lisa, for setting up some great shoes to uh, slide into. So I, I hope that this is a seamless transition and please reach out to us if you have questions about what's going on, what's on the agenda or, or things that you would like to see on come up in our discussions uh, during our committee meetings. So thank you guys for everyone. And um, I'd like to announce that our next regular meeting of the Art and Public Places Committee is scheduled for Monday, May 3rd. And unless we have any other business, uh, this meeting is now adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, thank everybody. Great to see you all. Thank you. Thanks for everything.